I'm John Nicholson. I'm the Member of Parliament for East Dumbartonshire and I'm a Scottish National Party Member of Parliament and I'm about to be <coughs> grilled uh, by, uh, by, my, uh, by my interviewer here. So um, let's see what happens. London, 2015. We have been given an assignment at the heart of the power in the UK. Our mission? To find out what makes MPs tick, what democracy is, and whether they think films can teach us about politics. This question comes from our Youth Advisory Council. What film made you want to change the world? Oh, that's a really good question. I think the film that made me want to change the world more than any other was a film called Cry Freedom. It was a mesmerising film about the power of individual actions and how they can change history. I remember Schindler's List is a film that had a big impact on me. It all happened and it could happen again. To Kill a Mockingbird was the first one that I, I watched and sort of thought, you know, wow, this is, you know, th this is not fair. Boys in the Hood, and it's a film that I watched when I was quite young. And that to me got me thinking about how socially things happen that's deliberately designed to keep people poorer. Do you think it's important for young people to watch films like He Named Malala or Suffragette and learn about things like democracy, equality and education? Yeah, absolutely. Because what happens is, kind of when you're younger, you kind of think that everything just is. That's the way it's always been. And you maybe don't realise that, you know, a hundred years ago, being female, you wouldn't have had the right to vote or you could only vote if you were married. And that kind of thing seems very unreal. For a lot of people, politics is a turn-off and um, history isn't that interesting. But when you present what are political issues through the medium of film in an entertaining, well-acted, thoughtful way, then young people in particular will take notice. It's very frustrating for me when people don't vote because you think, do you know that people died for you to have the right to vote? I think you should see films in order to get a sense of human possibility mm -hmm. and what the world is like and the way people lived in the past. Part of the power of film that it can make a sort of complex political and social subjects really um, accessible. A really good film can actually make you think about things a lot more than most other mediums, I think. We talked about how films like Suffragette can help us learn. What are the benefits of learning through film? I think it gives you a different perspective on learning. It's a good way to get a message across, especially for people that might not want to pick up those issues in other ways. Film is a way of portraying what life's about and bringing it down into perhaps one and a half or two hours, as opposed to experiencing something over 30 years, or indeed experiencing other people's lives from afar, from abroad or whatever. You know. At the premiere of Suffragette, there was a women's rights demonstration. How much have things changed since the Suffragettes? Well, there's still a long way to go. I, I, I mean, all my sort of active political life, and this goes on decades now, three decades, there's still an issue about how women are paid, how they can get into the boardroom, if they can get up there, and even if they do, what they're paid and what they're not. As a Member of Parliament, I would say we want to see more women in the House of Commons um, and you know, actively involved in politics in that way as well. These dates seem ancient to you, but it wasn't until <laughs> 1928 that women in this country got the vote. Now, that's, that's after centuries of men trying to get the vote, and then a century at least of women trying to get the vote, and even that was at a limited scale. So it's come a very, very long way, and there's much more to do. But at the moment, the momentum is on their side. Marilyn Monroe once said, if all you want is equality, then you're underachieving or something like that. So we need to strive for more anyway. I mean, yesterday in Parliament, we had a debate about the taxation on sanitary products. And because it's classified as a luxury product, where it's not a luxury, it's an essential. Films like The Hunger Games and Maze Runner represent unjust worlds. Do you think these reflect our real world in any way? Um, I would say yes, they do, because there's injustice going on in certain parts of the world. Um, certainly the Hunger Games and, and, yeah. and a few other, the, the whole world is, 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 is unjust. Well, I think in general we live in a pretty just world in this country. Of course, there are elements of injustice. We've talked about women's rights. But I don't think it's anything like the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games manages to um, sort of fuse reality shows with um, sort of the situation like we have with the Taliban in Afghanistan. 
And so what does Parliament do to address this? Well, uh, Parliament has to address these wider issues about inequalities in the best way that it can. I'm very proud of this government and the government before it, the amount of money we put into international aid and development. There's lots of work Parliament does to, to highlight issues uh, and to seek to persuade the government to provide solutions to those issues if it can, or if it's an international problem, to, to work with other governments around the world to solve those problems too. More and more we live our lives online. Would we be able to vote online as well? Obviously it can happen online, um, so I think yes we ought to be looking at ways in which we can vote for our uh, Member of Parliament, Member of the European Parliament, our councillors, um, our Prime Minister um, th through an online system. Do you know, I don't think so. I think we could design the technology to do it safely. I mean, some people say there's a risk of, you know, computers being hacked or data being hacked. So we wouldn't want to have hacking sort of disrupting voting. But, do you know, I think there's also a community experience about voting. We're seeing fewer and fewer young people registering to vote because we're making it quite hard for people to register to vote. So for the first time ever, we're actually going to see the number of people voting going down instead of should always be increasing in my view. So yeah, we should definitely be able to vote online and or text message as well. No, yeah. I think it'd be a very bad idea to vote online. Why do you think that? Because voting is a serious act um, and it's actually very easy to vote in this country. Everyone thinks it's hard to vote, very easy to yeah. vote. Um, and if you vote online, then you're making a vote for who your member of parliament is and therefore for who your government is and your parliament is. You're, you're making it like a vote on X factor. Yeah. Okay, and, um, and so voting um, in person is a very important and good thing. So do you think people wouldn't take it serious enough because of like you would think you vote online for reality shows I think there's stuff? a danger that they wouldn't take it as seriously. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I think it's more serious and important than that. And that was the end of the Was interview. that the end of the Yeah, thanks okay. for your time. Pleasure. Thank you.